discuss. If not, please ask me your doubts and questions. Okay, we can start now. So once again, I welcome you all for this particular session. Today is, I think, today is uh, lecture number nine that we are taking. Today is the fifth day of environmental awareness. <coughs> and in this particular lecture, we are going to start wherever we guys have stopped yesterday. Do you remember where we guys have stopped yesterday? Do you remember where we guys have stopped yesterday? What was the last point? Can you hear me? What was the last point? Do you know? Watershed management. Correct. So very nice answer Neha Gaikwad has given. I think Neha is the most sincere one. <coughs> there are others, some people like, but Neha answered in a very prompt manner. I request you all to also do the same things like Neha. So before uh, going to start, let me allow to share my screen. Please allow me to share my screen so that I'll go for it. Is my screen visible? Yes, we sir. Talking, okay, thank you very much. We were talking about social issues and environment and uh, as a part of that, we guys have covered so many things. And now, today also, we are going to cover something. So wherever we guys have stopped, and the point uh, that was given by Neha Gaikwa, that is watershed management, that we are going to see. Rainwater harvesting, we guys have seen in this session. And today, we are going to talk about this watershed management. So this one is a point of discussion today. and. Uh, this one is a part of uh, biodiversity and uh, conservation. And uh, today also, whatever point we guys have seen yesterday, and uh, we have started with environmental issues. Social and social issues and uh, social issues in environment is the topic of this discussion. And we have started this topic from last session onwards. I hope you guys are understanding whatever I'm teaching as far as social issues in environment is concerned. So the point which we are discussing today is watershed management. So what is watershed and why this watershed management is required? That also I'm going to tell you. So just if you look at this particular image that I have taken for you guys, you may understand so many things. And, uh, you know, we are trying to make a sort of management which is called as watershed management. Certain shades are made and uh, through those shades water management is done. If you look at the picture, if you look at the image, if you look at the slide, you may understand how it can be done. It can be done with the help of watershed divide, it can be done with the shade of water, river mouth and it can be done with the groundwater. So this way it can be done. Just look at the picture, I'm going to explain you the theoretical aspects also. Before that, you just observe this picture and uh, try to understand something because we learn so many things from the picture and this is my own experience also. So you just have a look on the picture, on the image and after that I'm going to tell you how this watershed management can be done. I hope my voice is clear and I'm completely audible to you all. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So now we are going to understand the concept of watershed. What is watershed? For what we call it watershed. In this previous image, we have seen the watershed exactly through picture or through image. Now we are going to understand the concept of watershed. Why it is must, why it is necessary, then what sort of meaning this watershed is having. So we are going to understand each and every uh, related concept regarding watershed uh, and uh, I'm going to start with the concept now. If you look at the first statement that I have made here, watershed is a geohydrological unit or piece of land that drain at a common point. Look at this, what they have given, watershed is a geohydrological unit. Geohydrological unit means what? This one is the Bhogalik Sorupa Sasato unit as well. And this one is a piece of land. Actually, this one is a you know piece or this one is a just a plot of land that drain at a common point. 
actually this one is a common point and uh, from that particular common point drainage sort of system is there i think we guys have seen that uh, if you look at this picture you can understand this so this one is a sort of uh, piece of land this entire thing is called about piece of land and this one is a just a drain uh, whatever I, you can see the river here this one is a, this one is the you know point of uh, river mouth so here water is flowing to the downstairs so this one is a sort of drain or drainage so water is going through this particular drain and these two sides are there and this particular piece of land is called what a unit or a point so this way we can understand so this one is a just a geo hydrological unit and or a piece of land and that particular piece of land is there and it is also called as common point where water can drain so this is a called about watershed then a watershed is defined as any spatial area or spatial area from which rain rain or irrigation water is collected and drained through a common point so here basically what happen you know uh, as i told you uh, this particular point is called as what spatial area or uh from which watershed is nothing but what a particular area a particular point a particular plot a particular uh, piece of land from rain water or irrigation water is collected if you look at the previous picture you can understand if this one is a you know mouth of uh, this one is a mouth of uh, a river so this particular cloud you can see here so water is coming from the rain or water is getting from the irrigation and that water is just flowing like this to this particular moment or this particular point so from this we can understand uh, which rain or irrigation water is collected and drained through a common point so water is collected here see water is collected from this particular cloud here and this water is coming from this particular point to the this particular point so this is watershed then the watershed and drainage basin are synonyms term indicating an area surrounded by a ridge line that is drained through a single outlet if you look at the see uh, these are the two words watershed and drainage watershed and drainage means what see this one is called about this particular area from this particular point uh, if you look at this see uh, this point and this point there are two sides so the area between these two sides is called about drainage or watershed so watershed uh and drainage both are drainage basin both are synonyms they are uh, common they are same and these terms are indicating surrounded a ridge line that is drained through a single outlet so here from this particular point and this particular side to this particular side water is just coming in between and this is called the basin area or drainage area and just water is flowing from this one to that one so this is called the watershed and uh, then a watershed is simply the land that water flows across or through on its way to a common stream river or lake so this way the water is coming the water is flowing the water is just getting into the ocean or like that so you can see the basin you can see the uh, common area where water is flowing so that particular thing is called about watershed watershed can be very large for example draining thousands of square miles to a major river or lake of the ocean or very small such as 20 acre watershed that drain to be a pond so see depend upon the uh, water where it is flowing so sometimes the watersheds can be very large sometimes it can be very small so sometimes in uh, sometimes it is in the miles sometimes it is in the acres or sometimes it is related to a pond also so depend upon the situation where watershed is there so according to that we can uh, you know measure the area of watershed so here we can see what sort of watershed is there and what sort of area of watershed is there if you look at the picture you may understand what sort of watershed is there or we can see now after that we are going to see the objectives of watershed management what are the objectives behind uh, doing this watershed management and uh, as i told you behind every activities there are some objectives and here also uh, 
if we want to go for watershed management, there are certain objectives. What are they and which are they? Just go through this and try to understand. The first objective behind watershed management is to control damaging runoff and degradation and thereby conservation of soil and water. The main logic and the main motive and the main objective behind going for watershed management is to control the damage of runoff water you know uh, runs or flows from top to bottom so in between there is a possibility of uh, damaging runoff and degradation and uh, thereby conservation of soil and water so there is a degradation of uh, conservation of soil and water so that can be also stopped and for this is what this kind of watershed management is done Moving on to this next one, and there we can see the second objective to manage and utilize the runoff water for useful purpose. So, whatever water we are wasting through runoff, runoff manje So, to manage and utilize the runoff water for useful purpose, whatever water that we waste through runoff that can be managed or that can be utilized for different purposes, and this is what watershed management is done. Through watershed management, we can stop runoff water and we can control or we can manage runoff water and whatever managed runoff water is there that can be utilized for different purposes. This is the objective of watershed management. Next, uh, next point or next objective is here with us to protect, conserve and improve the land of watershed, watershed for more efficient and sustained, sustained production. So whatever land which we are using for the purpose of watershed that can be protected, that can be conserved, that can be improved for the purpose of sustained production or more efficient production as such. So this one is one more objective behind going for watershed management. I hope you guys are understanding whatever I'm teaching. Moving to the next one, to protect and enhance the water resource originating in the watershed. So whatever water resources are originating in the watershed those can be protected those can be enhanced enhancements we can increase we can protect we can control them so this one is one more objective and that was objective number four now objective number five to check soil erosion and to reduce the effect of a sediment yield on the watershed so this one is one more objective and here we can see the soil erosion as well as we can reduce the effect of sediment yield on the watershed then next one to rehabilitate rehabilitate the deteriorating lands see uh, the land which is getting uh, what we call it unproductive uncultivated that can be rehabilitated with the help of this watershed management and this is what uh, watershed management is one of the important aspect as far as uh, soil or uh, social issues are concerned then to moderate the floods peaks at downstream areas as we know that flood peaks from at downstream areas too much and if we want to moderate it watershed management should be there to increase infill uh, filtration of rainwater if we want to infiltrate a rainwater then there should be watershed management as such to improve and increase the production of timbers, fooders, and wildlife resources. If we want to in, in, uh, increase this uh, these three kind of things like uh, production of timbers, fooders, and wildlife resources, then watershed management should be there. And the last one, to enhance the groundwater recharge whenever applicable. Basically, groundwater recharge means what? Whatever water we see around the ground or inside the land that if we want to if we want to recharge it if we want to contribute something in that then this kind of watershed management is necessary as we guys have seen in uh, you know mountain areas or in hill areas we can see such kind of watershed management and this watershed management is useful for so many reasons and there are different objectives there are several objectives behind watershed management as such I hope you guys understood the objectives behind watershed management and uh, I hope you guys have definitely 
gone through all these objectives and you guys have liked these objectives even you guys have understood all these objectives in a thorough manner so here we have done with objectives of watershed management now we are going to see the next one and what is that just have a look watershed management practices what sort of watershed management practices we guys have followed or we follow in our day-to-day -day life or government is also planning to go for watershed management practices so what sort of watershed management practices that we have those we are discussing here so if you look at the <coughs> practices that we follow for watershed management are if you look at the first one watershed management involves many techniques there are so many techniques not only a single technique is there there are so many techniques which are uh, which can be practiced for the purpose of watershed management and those are if you look at the first one these techniques can be summarized as grassland development these techniques if you want to go for watershed management practices these are the practices that we follow for the purpose of watershed management such as grassland development uh, gully plugs tree plantation and counter trenching on hilltops and slopes counter bunding water conservation structures lift irrigation schemes land leveling etc public participation and awareness so all these are the techniques which we guys have seen and the last point whatever i have noted down here that is for the practicing all those things if we want to apply if we want to practice all these techniques in or for the purpose of watershed management then what is needed awareness is required and public participation is also required if there is no awareness if there is no public participation then certain issues will be created so if we want to go for work watershed management practices then then these are the techniques that we can apply that we can use for the purpose of watershed management practices and a few of them i have taken here like you know grassland development gully plugs tree plantation counter trenching hilltop and slopes counter bending water conservation structures lift litigation schemes and land labeling by using by applying these techniques definitely we can go for watershed management practices if i'm not wrong i hope you guys are understanding whatever i'm teaching as far as the watershed management is concerned the next one is here resettlement and rehabilitation as we are going through listen as we are going through the social issues in environment so the another one is another one is resettlement and rehabilitation because of n number of reasons there is a need of resettlement and there is a need of rehabilitation for example if the town if the village or the land is acquired by the government for the purpose of constructing a dam so there will be a question in the in front of the government to resettlement of that particular town or village or rehabilitation of those people those who are affected by the dam so in that case this particular concept is there that is resettlement and rehabilitation of the people so if you look at the picture we can see people are protesting against the government and they are protecting for their resettlement and rehabilitation they are on the road now because of certain activities which are taken by the government as a part of development and now these people are fighting for fighting for what fighting for their rights of settlement or right of resettlement and rehabilitation if you look at the board which is there in the hands of that particular lady jal jangal aur zameen ye ho janta ke adheen so they are asking for water they are asking for forest they are asking for land for the entire people so there may be a question of what Re resettlement and rehabilitation and from that we can understand what sort of things are there as far as uh, resettlement and rehabilitation is concerned so we are going to see this one now we are going to understand the uh, introduction of that so just look at the points which i have noted down and i'm going to explain you those points also development projects essential no doubt whatever development projects are there we need those projects and without those projects development is not at all possible we are also agree that 
and certain development projects are undertaken by the government such as infrastructure facilities projects like roads then highways are also constructed and for that purpose government acquires land and uh, sometimes they construct a dam they sometimes they construct you know <coughs> a number of things and through that they try to develop uh, they try to go for development projects which are the most essential aspects of our day to day life but from that purpose they have to acquire the land they have to acquire the villages no doubt if they acquire the land and villages for the purpose of development projects it is expected but at the same time they have to think about the resettlement and rehabilitation of the people those who are residing there so that is the issue then to have development natural resources are utilized if we want to go for the development definitely we can utilize natural resources which are required then most affected are locals or native people who got affected or who is going to affect if we go for and development projects in certain areas no doubt the people those who are residing there and those can be called a lot native people or local people of that particular area definitely get get affected because of those development projects so those who are affected for those people we can have you know resettlement and rehabilitation programs then poorest of poor and underprivileged people those who are more poor and poorest of poor and underprivileged people they get more affected because they uh, you know don't have any other source of income they don't have any other source of uh, livelihood and this is what they get more affected so government should think about their rehabilitation and resettlement then various types of projects lead to displacement of locals most of the time when projects are made in certain areas those people are displaced or they got displacement and uh, if government think about their placement at a pro proper place it becomes rehabilitation those projects should be clearly have that resettlement and rehabilitation provision if there is no provision of resettlement and rehabilitation what will happen this these people will get affected and that will not be a good part of that so this is what various types of projects leads to displacement of locals so before launching the project before launching the development project government should think about what sort of provision they are making for resettlement and rehabilitation okay so this is for the concept of resettlement and rehabilitation and these are the things which are responsible for uh, rehabilitation and resettlement now moving to the next one displacement due to dams i we know that so many dams are constructed in india and because of those dams uh, displacement is taken place people are you know displaced people are you know uh, removed from that particular area then they were asked to go somewhere but at the same time if government takes a government makes a provision for their resettlement and uh, rehabilitation then 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 there will not be a sort of issue of their rehabilitation there will not be a sort of issue of their resettlement so there should be a provision of their resettlement as well as there should be a provision for their rehabilitation as such so here we can understand whatever i mean to say so here i have taken some displacement due to dams as we know that in india so many dams are there if you take an example of uh, maharashtra only we have a big dam in uh, you know satara district that is in patan or near to patan that is koina dam so because of koina dam there are also so many people are displaced so not only a single dam is there in india there are so many dams and because of that so many villages so many people were affected so we are going to see how the displacement due to dams are taking place by looking at this particular data by looking at this particular information so just let's look at this need space for such huge project if we want to go for such kind of dams and you know even for small lake also we need to have more space we need to have large space we need to have huge space and when we go for a huge space or large space automatically the area and the people who are around that particular area or that particular project automatically gets affected then local tribals and natives are affected those who are residing over there 
local people, even tribal people also, and natives of that particular area got affected. We, suppose we are here and suppose, uh, you know, dam is constructed somewhere. We don't have any problem with us, but the people, those who are residing in that area where a dam is going to be constructed, then that people, those people will be definitely not affected. And this is what it is not good as such. Then families have to leave the in central place and need to settle elsewhere. So whatever place they were residing from so uh, from generation to generation, that particular place they have to leave and they have to settle some, somewhere where government will make a provision of their settlement. If government will not make any sort of provisions for their settlement, then there is a question again. So that is the issue. Where they were residing from generation to generation, that particular place they have to leave and they have to settle somewhere wherever they get a chance. So it is, you know, this one is the thing that we need to understand. Here I have taken certain uh, examples of uh, different development projects and because of that we are going to see how many people got affected and how many villages got affected. So see here are Kund Dam. This one is a dam in India which is constructed by the government and because of this particular dam land is uh, acquired even land is taken by the government and because of this particular dam 20,000 people got affected and uh, almost 250 villages got affected because of this particular dam. So that was the question in the mind of government how to resettle and how to rehabilitate these people from these 250 villages. That was the question. Then Bhakra Nangal Dam, this one is also a dam, Bhakra Nangal Dam, not even half of the displays resettled. So who were got affected because of this Bhakra Nangal Dam? Out of those people, not only 50% people are resettled so far. The dam is constructed or dam was constructed in so many years back. Still people are settling, uh, still people are suffering, still people are fighting for their settlement and still government is making provisions for their settlement, uh, resettlement and rehabilitation. So these are the issues. So my, my, what I think that if government wants to go for such kind of development or big or huge development projects, at the same time government should make a provision of their resettlement, even the government should make a provision for their rehabilitation. If there is no provision as such, then people will fight for their rights and they will spare their life. They will spare their entire life for the fighting with the government. So this is not good as such. Then Sardar Sarovar Dam, as we know that, Sardar Sarovar, which is on Narmada River. So this one is, I think, Omega Patkar is fighting for this. Almost 41,000 families will get affected or get displayed due to this... Uh, reservoir and uh, because of this uh, most of the people they are affected and for the purpose of rehabilitation those who are getting affected because of Sardar Sarovar dam uh, Mega Patkar is fighting she is a social worker even Amir Khan also you know uh, raised these issues of family families which are affecting because of Sardar Sarovar so because such kind of things are happening and uh, these are the things which are responsible for displacement due to dams and the last one, Tehiri Dam. And this one is uh, one more dam which is called as Tehiri Dam. And because of this Tehiri Dam, uh, entire Tehiri town is going to affect and or affect, got affected. 10,000 people got affected and there is a question in the mind of government. There is a question for the government how to resettle and how to rehabilitate 10,000 people. So that is the question. So these are the things or these are the dams or list names of dams and the number of people and the number of villages and the number of towns which were affected because of this kind of development projects taken by the government. No doubt government should go for, <coughs> sorry, no doubt, doubt government should go for uh, development projects for the development of the country. At the same time, government should think about the resettlement and rehabilitation of the people. If they do not think about the rehabilitation and resettlement, definitely people will face certain issues. People will, you know, have some issues if they don't get resettled or rehabilitated. So this is what I want to suggest one thing at the uh, end point of this particular point. If government wants to go for development projects, at the same time, government should take care of the people, those who are residing in that particular area, such as locals, tribals, 
and the villagers of their resettlement and rehabilitation. If they have a perfect plan of resettlement and rehabilitation, then there is no question of development plans or develop, development projects. And no one will oppose those particular development plans and projects. I think you guys have also seen one news, I think from last two, three years, we are getting one news in Konkan. In Konkan, government is planning to go for Nanar project, which is in Ratnagari district. Nanar project, and that project is opposed by the local people. Even politicians also, or even political parties also made a capital and they also opposed. So why they people are opposing? Because there is not a, there is no, there is no certain plan with the government of rehabilitation and the resettlement of the people, those who are residing there. So these are the things which we need to understand here. If government wants to go for development projects, at the same time government has, has government should have one particular plan to rehabilitate the people and resettle the people. This is the only thing that I want to tell you here through this particular slide. Moving on to the next one. Now we are going to see something different. A review by the World Bank was that an average of 13,000 people are displayed by each new large dam constructed currently. So this one is a review. This one is a you know survey conducted by World Bank. And according to this survey, if we construct, if we go for one large dam construction, almost 13,000 or average 13,000 people got affected because of this kind of large project. So if you go for one small construction, one large construction of dam, then Think about that 13,000 13, people got affected and they get resettled or they, they get uh, displaced because of this kind of dam. And the last one, by this estimate, Indians displayed by the country, Indians displayed by the country, 3,000 plus da large dams would number over 13,9 millions. So yeah, I think in India, 3,000 plus are large dams we have. If you look at the above estimate or about number of displayed people, displaced people. So if we consider our country, if we apply the same estimate to our country, 3000 plus large dams we have. So if you consider 3000 plus large dams, then 39 millions, it lakh. 39 millions people got displaced because of the large number of dams in our country so government should make a provision for these 39 people 39 millions people for their resettlement as well as their rehabilitation so is it possible to rehabilitate them is it possible to resettle them no the answer is what answer is no so if government uh, you know takes care of their resettlement and rehabilitations, then no issue at all. But it should be a provision before going for the construction of a large dam. But uh, as we know that politics is there, certain issues are there that we cannot imagine, that we cannot discuss here. And this is what uh, ordinary people like us, they suffer, suffer a lot in such kind of cases. I hope you guys understood whatever I mean to say. Now, uh, displacement due to mining, this one is the point, and uh, mining means, you know, mines, coal mines and oil mines are there. So, in this particular point we are going to see in next lecture, only last two minutes are left, and I'm going to wind up here. I'll stop my presentation, so you remember this point, and from this particular point onwards, we are going to start our second session. So here, I stop my presentation, and, and, and uh, I'll get back to my home screen, where you all are here. So I request you all to ask your questions and doubt if you have. If you do not have any question or doubt as such, then we can wind up. So boys and girls, I would like to ask you some few questions. Uh, whatever I am teaching, whether you are getting or not, whether you are understanding or not, that I want to know. Yes, Chalo Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Yash. Others, yes, Pornima Kulkarni also said yes.